Hey everyone, I'm Nix, head of product at Printful. I have been with the company for almost seven years now. Uh, it has been quite an exciting ride but so far, but it, there's still so much to accomplish together with our partners. And I currently lead um, teams that are responsible for most of the user-facing functionality that you see at Printful. E-commerce platform integrations, you know, product publishing flows, uh, that kind of Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm definitely happy to have you here today. We love talking about and promoting Printful. We think it's a, an amazing tool that can empower a lot of creators and sellers. So really happy to have you here today to talk about Printful. I'm Art with No Code Devs. Uh, I want to thank the No Code Devs community for checking out this webinar and uh, checking out Printful as well. Let's go ahead and get started. Can you provide me with an overview of some of the key services and features that Printful offers to its customers? Sure. So we think of ourselves as a tech company that essentially empowers partners to build brands and businesses through on-demand manufacturing, right? So more practically speaking, it's fulfilling custom clothing, on-demand accessories, home and living items for online businesses. And the Printful story started in 2013 and started with, with the SMB customer base, right? Small and medium-sized businesses and a self-service platform where essentially you can connect your e-commerce store Printful, design and publish products, and we automatically fulfill them in your brand's name. So since then, we've, we've grown a lot and we also work with large enterprises now. So we can't mention a lot of them because we're a white label service, but there are a couple of, a couple of customers that, that, that you can see on our site, you know, Coca-Cola, different streaming services, some of the largest uh, enterprises of the world. And, and then now our offering is essentially ranges from the self-service product and also like a full service model where we essentially are also able to run stores for larger enterprises. And, and we have 15 fulfillment centers globally that allows us to, you know, provide consistent quality in our fulfillment and essentially empowers our partners to build global businesses. Awesome. Yeah. Speaking from my own experience, being not only a Printful partner, but prior to that, a Printful customer, the quality is, you know, unrivaled. The, the fulfillment is always quick. It's truly white labeled. And we've had nothing but an awesome experience with the platform. And I think that's a testament to the, the team that you've built up, as well as the, you know, sort of distribution that you have all across the world. So um, really, really, really an awesome product in our experience as well, both from a partner side and a customer side. So let's just say someone wants to get started with a print on demand business. How would someone go about doing that? Yeah, so I think you should start with essentially figuring out what are your strengths in, you know, across sort of that road, which is, you know, building a business, like we can take a lot off of our, you know, customers and partners plates in terms of fulfillment, but, but you could have, you know, strengths in design, in, in writing marketing content, SEO, some other things that either, you know, either an existing audience or, or something that allows you to build that audience. And and that's the next thing that you should figure out. What is that your, your niche that, that you, that you can offer to, to some, because you know, there's, you know, nowadays there's an abundance of, of possibilities in terms of, you know, what you can buy in the e-commerce world and, 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 you know, that designing opportunities also, you know, are widely available. So essentially you need to figure out what your audience is when, when you, before you jump, you know, into this uh, with both feet. Then some of the other larger decisions I think to, uh, to think about is decide where to sell at. So Printful, for example, has integrations with 20 e-commerce platforms, all of the biggest names in the industry, Shopify, Etsy, WooCommerce, a lot of others. And first of all, before you get to even, you know, picking a specific platform, one of the, one of the sort of trade-offs that you maybe have to make is to figure out whether you want to build your own store, which could be, you know, more branded. Uh, you can decide either you host it or, or the platform hosts it. And, you know, it could be, there could be more customization opportunities in that way. On the other side of the spectrum, there are marketplaces like Etsy, for example, which, you know, some of the benefits are that, you know, a lot of customers are going to find, find new products they want to buy in Etsy. So there's some traffic. Uh, already, but still you need to then sort of battle with other sellers in terms of optimizing your listings with keywords, 
So I think that's what one one of the decisions that that you need to make before you even get to like picking a specific platform. And well, what what I can mention is we we try strive to make that those parts of of this journey also you know as easy for our customers as possible with with a lot of educational content that hopefully can help you guide through some of those trade offs and decisions. Yeah, that's really helpful. And I really, as a non-technical person who's, who's not building things from scratch and, you know, not integrating, let's just say with your API or something like that, I really like the uh, vast array of choices that, that you have in your integration side. So I've connected to Etsy uh, in the past. I've connected to Wix. Uh, I also believe I've done Shopify a few years back. So just having the, the array of options is nice, but you definitely, I think what you're sort of saying is you definitely want to tap into the skills that you already have. So if you're, if you're a strong writer or you're a strong designer, make sure you use those skills because, you know, you have to sort of focus what you're good on and then like integrate in the on-demand e-commerce side into whatever those skills already are. Also, you know, I think that it's nice to have options, but you should also, you know, research what platform makes the most sense for you and, you know, research your competition, all that's, that sort of thing. Because you have so many options with Printful that, that you want to make the right choice to you know, for your distribution channel, whether it be Etsy or Wix or something in between. So, yeah. And, and I'm also thinking that, you know, it's, you just have to start somewhere and you can, you know, adjust those decisions later down the road as well. Like we've seen customers, you know, start with their own branded store, but then also later, you know, wanting to expand their offering into Amazon as well. So essentially they can, you know, publish similar products from Primful to Amazon directly as well. So so you just have to start somewhere and then iterate towards the, you know, the perfect business that, that you want to build. Yeah, that's great advice. Just get started and iterate uh, once, once you get going. But, you know, the first step is getting started for sure. I say that a lot, you know, in, in a lot of different areas of life. So, okay, cool. So you've gotten started and you've gotten, you know, sort of first foot uh, through the door. What tips and advice do you have to sort of grow beyond that first step from zero to one? So I think this, by the way, applies not only to, you know, just growing the print on demand business, but e-commerce generally. And this is something that also we do when we built the platform that all of our customers use, testing different things, right? You know, testing different types of products, different types of designs, experimenting with, with pricing. Then in terms of marketing, what we've seen work well is, of course, some, uh, uh, you know, special offers specifically around holidays. Another tip is that product recency matters. So, so we suggest customers to regularly sort of expand the collect your their collection in the context of, you know, especially for repeated customers. It's it's interesting if they you know see your product collection sort of evolve over time whenever they come to the site, and 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 we also see that customers you know regularly check how check the product performance and, you know, decide to pull some items, add some other new designs back. And so, so those are some of the aspects that I would suggest to think about. A lot of that is, I think, testing and iteration might be like a, you know, a, a recurring theme for, for, for a lot of these topics. Yeah, I love that. And, it, and it's so easy to add new products. So, you know, with Printful, it's really easy to do. You may think it, it might sound overwhelming to be constantly adding and changing your product, but really it is easy. If you have your designs uploaded, you can just simply add products or take products away from your mix. So uh, you did mention pricing there. I think that's really interesting and, you know, could be overwhelming for someone to start. Where do you sort of, how do you help people set their pricing and what do you recommend for setting prices for your online store? Yeah, this is a, topic that is closely correlated to to the decision of what platform are you using because one of the first things that i usually suggest customers to to do is to really figure out what are what are their costs sort of what, what's the cost structure that they are working with because you know we try to make you know with primful you only pay when an order comes in so essentially for each item that is fulfilled so there are no upfront costs uh, at the same time depending on what a platform you use, what kind of, you know, marketing spend that you have, the cost that you see on, uh, on Primful might not be the only ones that you, you know, need to take into account. And I think this is also one of the areas that we still, you know, would definitely want to improve in, in our product to help customers, you know, with, with those decisions more and surfacing some of the potential, you know, fees that from other platforms that we, you know, that we know about already. But it's definitely, you know, if you're using Etsy, you should 
be very familiar of what you know Etsy charges for publishing the listing or or selling an, an item, and then you should take that into account when you price price. And you also likely need to make some assumptions based on the audience, right? And and the product that you're selling, whether it's a you know very targeted niche with a very specific sort of you know potentially a narrow but very passionate fan base, right? Uh, or or if you are sort of targeting a more wide audience and that might also influence how you think about about the price point and then we also have some product in in product suggestions when you're let's say going through the what we call the product push flow at primple as well like we we use our own internal data to to see sort of what are the you know what could be suggested pricing for for specific items that we see uh, other sellers are successfully selling so but i i i think you know i i I'd also want to mention that pricing might be one of the more complicated topics to, you know, to, to all of this. And, and, and so I, w I hope that, you know, listeners don't get discouraged if they, you know, if you if they don't get it right away or also some iteration is, is, is necessary. And if it takes time to understand all of, all of this, because that might be one of the more complicated aspects. Yeah. Pricing is, is definitely uh, complicated, but you in my experience, do offer some very helpful tools for setting prices correctly. But to your point, it also really does depend on the platform that you're integrating with. For instance, if you had a thousand products and you were planning to sync these all to Etsy, you would definitely want to know that there's a listing fee for each product that you sync to Etsy, and that would probably factor greatly into your pricing. So just doing your research and and you know using the resources that are available to you within within Printful, as well as you know your help guides and, and everything else that's out there. Just just make sure you do your research and choose the right platform. Pivoting yeah. a little bit here, you have a you have an offering called Printful Memberships. Talk about those a little bit and why they might be important or matter for online sellers. Right. So this is one of our most recent launches, actually, one of the biggest initiatives that, that we did this year. Printful Memberships is a program, a subscription that offers a number of benefits for our sellers. So there are two types of a membership, Printful Growth and Printful Business. So with Printful Growth, you can uh, you can buy into the program by purchasing a subscription for twenty five dollars a month. But the interesting aspect in where we feel like you know this is an innovative way to 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 look at this is if you reach twelve thousand dollars in sales in rolling twelve months, and you get a the next year of the of the membership for free on us. So essentially, we're actually voiding the subscription fee if you get to a certain point with your order volume. Because, you know, our goal is to help our customers to become as successful as they can be. And a big part of that is, we just talked about pricing, right? One of the, one of the biggest benefits that these, this membership program offers you is a lower price point. Uh, up to 20% discount on DTG products, even more. Uh, on some other categories, and there are you know some some other benefits around that as well. So essentially, I would suggest that the Printful Growth Plan is something to really consider if you're if you're serious about you know starting to venture into you know BOD and and building a business because it can help you with uh, sort of starting off with a, with a lower price point already, and you know then taking those savings and either investing more in marketing or just passing them onto your uh, onto your customers, you know, to improve conversion rate with lower pricing, for example. And then the other tier is called Primple Business. And, and that uh, is one that you can only grow into after you're, uh, you're in the growth. And there, there the threshold is, you know, once you reach uh, $60,000 uh, of, of revenue per, uh, per uh, in, in, in 12 months, you are automatically upgraded into business. So you don't have to do anything extra. And then you get, you know, to, to another tier of discounts and to, to, together with some other benefits. One of the most interesting ones here is free digitization for embroidered products, right? So embroidery is, you know, decoration technique different from direct to garment printing. And there are some, you know, there's a process called digitization that needs to happen once for every flat file that gets uploaded to Printful because we need to convert it into, you know, essentially stitching instructions for the machines. And there's an added cost to that, but we're made, waiving that for, for business uh, customers. Yeah, I can imagine that, that these plans would be 
you know, super beneficial for, you know, you know, companies and small businesses once they reach a certain amount of scale? Are you typically seeing sort of a follow-up question? Are you typically seeing, you know, people come in on consumer plans and then as they grow, uh, these plans would, you know, be more attractive to them? Is that sort of the typical workflow, sort of a consumer plan and then moving into the memberships or are companies coming right in on memberships from the onset? So what I want to stress out here is that it's not mandatory to subscribe, like, you know, to, to use Printful. So I think this is very important because there might be, you know, a misconception that, you know, this means that we're somehow limiting the sort of free user, you know, experience, which, which is not the case, right? You still get, you know, a limited amount of, you know, stores and products. And so essentially it's not mandatory. So, so we have still a lot of people, you know, using the, the free plan, so to speak. But I think the consideration could then be, yeah, whether, you know, by looking at the benefits, especially pricing, right? If you have a great idea about how you'd invest, you know, these extra savings, uh, you know, extra couple of dollars for, for each product that you save, maybe that actually, maybe for in some cases, it could actually be a great idea to already, you know, register the Primful and, and start on the growth subscription because that can actually accelerate your growth in the early stages as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. We've talked about, you know, through this interview already, some of the, the features that separate, you know, Printful from its competitors, you know, distribution, white labeling, and there's many, many more. But, you know, there, there are options out there in the marketplace. So you can just talk a little bit about you know, sort of what sets Printful apart from other print on demand companies in the marketplace in terms of quality and customer service. Definitely. I think. Quality is, quality is definitely something that we're very proud of. And that, that is sort of what, what, you know, what sets us apart is the one where the we're rare, uh, POD providers in the world that actually own our own fulfillment centers, right? Which means that all of our systems are vertically integrated. It means that we are very confident that we know sort of that, how the product that you design will, you know, come out of the printers on the other side. It also means that we you know, own our own, you know, internal information of how we're doing with the orders. And there's, you know, constant flow of improvement, both on the, you know, software product side, the customer facing software product side, but also, you know, fulfillment. Um, and so that is something that I think is sort of really sets us apart. Like if, if you're looking for, for the highest quality, you know, products out there with, then I think Primful is the, is the right choice. And it's, I think, especially important because, you know, with POD, there also might be that notion that you sort of might not get to touch every product that goes out your sort of, you know, own stock and, you know, gets to the customer, but essentially as we own our own fulfillment, then, then we can, you know, really promise, I think a higher level of, of certainty about, about the end result and a better, better experience for, for our sellers. Yeah. Yeah. In my, in my experience, just just being a customer, frankly, the, the real-time updates are, are very quick, very accurate. The fact that you, I think one of the bigger concerns of, of somebody who's using print on demand is, oh, I don't have, you know, that much control. I don't, I don't have the inventory, so I have to rely on somebody else. I have to rely on Printful to get this done. But the fact that you own your distri distribution centers and vertically, vertically integrate anything, you know, gives me confidence as a consumer that you'll be able to deliver on your promises and you have in, in my experience. But I think that, that, you know, being able to confidently say that eliminates some of that, you know, some of that potential gap of trust that you might have if you're using print on demand. And you know, I love that, love that you're doing that. So that's great. Yeah. And uh, even if, even if something happens, right, you know, that's where also our customer service comes in and our, you know, policy of, you know, where we're always, you know, if, if, if something goes wrong in a facility and, you know, there's a damaged product, uh, which doesn't happen very often, but, you know, still, you know, there, there could be those cases, then, you know, we sort of, we, we ship out, you know, reshipments if, if necessary, right? And our customer support is always there to, to help the, the store owners with, with any such, such cases. Amazing. I imagine that with 12 distribution centers, you're printing, and I think you have these, these numbers publicly. Uh, available, but you're printing a lot of products, right? You're shipping all over the world. So how can you talk about sustainability and environmental practices within all your operations when you're, you know, creating that much product? I think that that's a concern that people have. They want to, not only that, that, you know, print on demand businesses have, but customers want uh, to buy products that are sustainable 
in a, and you know they want to work with uh, companies that are environmentally practicing safe practices. So, what can you say about that with Pitbull? Definitely, I think that this is a topic that's important to us. It's important to our our customers, merchants, or sellers, and their customers as well. And I think uh, personally that this is going to you know become an even you know bigger topic. It should, right? If we if we want to live, we continue to live on this planet, you know, a bit longer. And I think, you know, the most important aspect about sustainability is that it generally, uh, by choosing print on demand, you choose, you already choose a peril that's, you know, created only when an order is placed, right? So we already, by definition, create less fabric waste than, than con conventional manufacturing. And so I hope that more and more companies of different sizes, not only SMBs, but also, you know, large enterprises can see that they can at least incorporate, you know, BOD in some parts of their product offering as a start or as an experiment to, to get, you know, to get, 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 get it going. And then, uh, you know, we can really just optimize for, for, for creating what, what is necessary and, and not, not creating overstock situations. But there are a couple of other factors that, that come to mind is, fulfilling product products locally. So more than 80% of our orders are delivered in the same region that they are fulfilled. So the fact that we have facilities in the US and Europe and you know, other places in the world allow us to always route the products depending on the availability, right? There could be some exceptions, but like globally, in a lot of the cases, the absolute majority, we are able to essentially uh, ship the product out of a, of a fulfillment center, which is the closest to the customer in the same region, hopefully limiting, you know, shipments going, going overseas. And, and then, you know, by strategically, you know, and, and how essentially be the fact that these fulfillment centers uh, are strategically located in these regions, you know, as to uh, allow for faster shipping times and lower shipping costs and, you know, it helps with reducing, you know, CO2 emissions when, when transporting borders. Um, and then specifically for, for customers who, who already want to go to, the, to that next level of, you know, uh, eco-friendliness in terms of their product choices, we also have, you know, an eco-friendly product collection that you can browse on our site. And, and then, you know, all products there consist of you know, at least 70% organic or, or recycled materials. And, and, and that's one way how we also try to be on the full, you know, fulfillment, fulfillment line. We also just try to showcase some of these possibilities better to customers so that they can make those decisions when they are picking products, for example. Yeah, I know that I've seen some of that sort of marketing when, when picking products in our, in our store, you know, around eco-friendly and sustainability. And not only are you you know, reducing, you know, CO2 with shipping, you're, you know, using local distribution centers as much as possible, but that also ties into just better customer service, you know, cust you know, people are getting their products faster. They, the print on demand business is happier. The customer is happier. It's a, it sounds like a win, win, win. So that's super cool. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, so next question here, the, you know, the world is always changing rapidly, of course, but in the tech space, it's even faster, right? We all see this every single day. There's emerging technologies, I'm sure, in manufacturing that I'm not aware of, but then you've got, you know, all the other emerging technologies that, that are out there. This could be new social platforms. This could be new AI capabilities. This could be um, a whole array of things. And I'm sure that there's a lot of things swirling around um, in your world that I'm not even familiar with. But, you know, where, where do you see, you know, uh, in terms of like, I guess, opportunities and just where do you see it going in general? Where do you see the print on demand industry evolving to in the next, you know, three to five years? And, you know, what, uh, just sort of a two-part question, but what printing technologies or techniques is Printful currently exploring or excited about in relation to these new technologies? So sort of a two-part question. Yeah, sure. So, of course, AI is a big topic, I think, globally, not only in BOD and even not only in e-commerce, right, in, in tech in general. So we're definitely excited to see where that goes. And specifically, I think there could be great opportunities to you know, help people to be more creative with design, you know, you know, building designs, right? Or even, you know, adjusting, editing their existing designs. And we're closely following sort of what, what's happening in, in the industry with that and, and considering our moves, sort of how 
deeply we want to or or need to you know be integrated with some some of these solutions and sort of what what is the value that we can provide to customers i think that you know the flip side or like the tricky aspect about ai is that you know we are really looking for you know beyond just you know taking ai because it's an interesting technology but you know we really want to figure out what's the real added value to the customer, right? So we can get past those buzzwords uh, only and, and sort of uh, figure out what real value we are creating. But but I think there's there's definitely some opportunity to do that with, with designs. And then on the other side of the spectrum in terms of maybe fulfillment techniques, I think um, maybe it's less new per se, but we're very excited about embroidery, right? Embroidery is an interesting technique because it's, you know, it, it has a more premium feel than maybe than, you know, just a printed t-shirt. It's more durable and, you know, something different from all of the printed t-shirts that, that yet you see out there. And there we have an interesting partnership with the company called Color Reel, where essentially some of our products now support the Color Reel technology, which means that embroidery machines are are limited by by a specific amount of thread colors that you can have with a design. And that's quite limiting because you cannot, you know, really uh, get an embroidered design maybe with, with that much variety of, of, of color that you'd like. And what Color Reel does is instead of just using like a 50 set of 15 pre-colored threads, it's a machine that allows us to, you know, color the thread essentially. And then, you know, pick whatever color you do, you might want. And and this is something that that you can also see in our uh, on our site. You know, uh, you know you can you can pick either the standard embroidery or 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 uh, advanced embroidery options, and and then you know see how it's different in in terms of the uh, uh, in terms of the colors and just you know creativity that that you can get out of out of that. So so those would be some of my recent highlights that we hope more and more people will also check out. Yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, I don't know much about that technology, but I would imagine that it would allow you to, you know, be much more capable, you know, in in matching, you know, brand colors with with uh, embroidery and things like that, and really, you know, be able to give somebody who wants embroidery the the, the, the full array of color options, which is just super cool. So you kind of got into the next question I had for you a little bit there with Color Real being sort of a a partnership of sort, but. There's also things on, you know, the, the sort of tech side, front end sales side that, you know, we've seen recently, like, I think one was the, the I could be wrong about this, but the TikTok uh, shop capabilities, you know, being able to sell on these different uh, channels. So are there any other, other than Color Wheel, are there any other partnership or collaborations in the pipeline that you can talk about that you're excited about uh, with Pinful? Yeah, I, I can't talk much about what's in the pipeline, but uh, when you, you know, started to sort of to ask the question, the first thing that that came to mind was TikTok Shop as one of the one of the more recent, more exciting partnerships, right? So we were the first POD partner that launched an integration with with TikTok. It actually first they had a, a bit of a pilot project in the UK last year, and we we had an integration there as well. And now when they expanded to to expand the TikTok Shop to US, we were there as well. And I think social commerce is generally quite exciting because it. It sort of meets meets the customers where they are nowadays, right? In in social media, and and if we can, you know, limit the number of interactions uh, from you know interesting content to maybe you know purchasing something that's sort of showcased in in that content, um, I think it could be a great experience for for customers. And we're we're quite happy to be at the for forefront of this, and and pretty excited about you know uh, how that could grow in the future. Yeah, I think any way that you can make it easier for creators to to get up and running is is a great thing. You know, there's there's a lot of creators out there that just want to create, right? And are already creating their content, even though it's fairly straightforward to, you know, get your print on demand shop up with some of the other platforms. To somebody who is just creating video content all the time, they might not want to think about that, right? They just want to be able to integrate their shop right into the platform that they're already on. So offering these new channels is definitely very exciting. I was happy to see that you were, you know, the first print on demand company to be on TikTok. Super cool. Okay. Last question I've got for you here. This isn't too hard of a question, but what's the most significant misconception people have about the print on demand industry? I'm sure there's a few out there, but you know, and, and how does Printful address it? What do you think the answer to that misconception is? Great question. 
I think one of the biggest misconceptions about POD could be that it's, it's expensive. Um, because, you know, we've always heard about, you know, the ability to, you know, print a lot of t-shirts for, you know, a couple of dollars or, you know, even, you know, send them in in bulk from, from other regions of the world. And, and if you look at, you know, it, it, it might be more expensive if you just look at, you know, the product price that you, that you see on our site, for example. But when you, you know, feel, you know, one layer off of that, and then when you need to think about how hard it is to actually hold inventory how to deal with potentially, you know, less user-friendly platforms to order something or, you know, how to know what sells and, you know, either run out of, you know, 3XL in purple or, uh, or, you know, sort of don't, you know, not being able to foresee, you know, a demand in, uh, in, in, in a way for something and, and essentially take on risk of, of sort of investing and tying up more capital into buying a lot of variations of product. Then I think, you know, if you could, if you would look at, you know, the pros and cons and the list and do some calculation, you would see that in terms of actually sort of POD is just much more sustainable and also easier to, to run the, that business and like then tying back up to what we, where we, what we started with. Essentially, if you don't have to think about those types of risks and concerns, then you can just, you know, focus really on, on you know, what, you, what you're, but the best at, you know, either it's design or marketing or something else that, that makes you, you know, that you're really passionate about in, in the scope of all of the things related to running a business. Yeah, I love that. I think that the, you know, the, the two opposites of the spectrum, you know, no scale, you know, no sales and scale are both major problems because if you, you have a sales spike, something happens, someone, you know, maybe picks up your store, there's a press release, something like that, all of a sudden you have a spike of orders that you can't fulfill that becomes very expensive very fast and, and it you know, creates churn and problems and, you know, people don't come back to your store because they're unsatisfied. And the opposite problem is you have a ton of inventory you can't sell. That's also very expensive and it creates waste. It's not very sustainable. So I think that's a really good answer. And, and you have to, you know, factor all of that into to the price, you know, ultimately in your pricing model. And, and I think that you can get it right, but you have to, you know, you know, you kind of have to do the math and, you know, weigh the, the pros and cons of everything. So. Great answer. Yeah, thank you for that. So yeah, that's all I had for you uh, today. I really appreciate you coming on, talking about Printful. I think that our audience will find a lot of value in this. I think that you tackled a lot of questions that people have about the print-on-demand industry in general and really showed why Printful is the best option for anyone out there who's looking to start a print-on-demand business or even grow their existing print-on-demand business. So yeah, thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else that you would like to add? No, I think just that, you know, great, great talking with you and, you know, happy, happy to be here and hopefully some of this will, will be useful. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on today.